Now it's time to get into our discussion on the upcoming season. Deadpool and Wolverine. Evan said he's going to be first in line to see the movie. <laughs> uh, I want to be able to enjoy that movie, but I, I know better. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's pretty much like the point I came to with Tarantino. He's a talented guy. He doesn't make movies for me. I'm not going to waste any more of my time watching them. Okay. Fair and enough. I give up the right to criticize them. I, I will see this eventually because it's part of the MCU, although I'm telling myself that my expectations for it are building up too much. Like I thought, you know, Black Widow was going to revolutionize, you know, we, uh, we'd gone, you know, over a year without it. And which right. led me to not be as impressed with Black Widow. Then when I watched it, you know, like a, a while later and just watched it for what it was, I'm like, yeah, it's a good movie. It should have come out even before the pandemic be because, you know, her story's over. But other than that, good movie. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm trying to tell myself that I'm building it up and it's not going to be the be all end all for what happens next in the MCU. I just, you know, people make movies for different people. Ryan Reynolds is great as Deadpool. He's funny, but it's so vile. Mm hmm. And if you're finally bringing some version of the X-Men into the MCU, I feel like you shouldn't eliminate a big chunk of your audience just from the get-go. Because right. even if you think Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool is the height of action comedy cinema, you have to admit that there is a portion of the audience that would like to see it that has no business watching it. I'm an adult. I can choose oh, yeah. whether or not to, to see it. Kids have no business watching that, and parents shouldn't take them to watch it. But also, it's right there with, you know, guys that are on merchandise and stuff that they like. Yep. I don't know. I, you know, do do your R-rated thing. I mean, I didn't come out on my high horse against the Punisher because it was so well done. And it wasn't just heaping nastiness on nastiness and calling it comedy. True, uh, true. This is a podcast about Marvel Snap, right? That's right. That's right. So we got to talk okay. about. Hang on. G give me one second. Okay, stepped off the soapbox, putting it away. Let's talk about some cards. Because even though I'm not thrilled about the theme, they listened to one of our recent top fives. Yes, they did. Gwenpool, four cost, six power, on reveal. Pick a random card in your hand three times. Give it plus two power each time. And yeah, I mean, this is going to be the classic Marvel team up. You wanted it. You got it. Wong and Gwenpool. Folks, you're hand is going to be just chock full of power to lay down. Shang-Chi will come along and ruin it. Yes, he will. There will be a, a Shang-Chi, the resurgence. Or the Shadow King. That's who your uh, no-fun deck can include. That's that, right. Uh, when when she debuts. That's right. She'll be uh, the Shadow King. Uh, not, you know, he's not used very often, but this is a card that could counter that. Um, I finally figured out how to use him to the point where I don't put him in a lot of decks, but I consider him. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I just wrote a note down here about Arishim, and one of the advantages to Arishim is allowing people to test cards out that they may mm -hmm. not actually have, right? Uh -huh. so, uh, or cards that you have but don't use, even. Right, right. So uh, it kind of occurred to me because I don't. One pool is a pretty cool card. I, I'm I, I like what it can do compared to the rest of these. Some of these have some unique stuff going on. But anyway, Gwenpool, I think, to me, stands out. She's going to be the card that you get when you pay for the season. Anyway, I'm looking forward to it. What about you? Oh, yeah. And, I mean, Gwenpool, I read some of her early comic appearances. Her series is one of those that I go back and try to fill in. I haven't read as much as I'd like, but usually when I read the reader stuff, it's pretty good. Another one I'll recommend is Gwenpool Strikes Back. Okay. Where she has figured out, you know, her, her deal is she's a person from the real world, quote unquote, real world, who has landed in the Marvel Universe. And she's a Marvel super fan. And she figures out that now that she doesn't have an ongoing series, she's in danger of getting killed off. So she's trying to find a way to stay relevant and appealing to readers so she doesn't get killed off. <laughs> I love how they like double down on the meta uh, with her. Oh, yeah. You know, that's great. I'll be interested to see kind of what the animation and audio is with her because I know on Puzzle Quest, they did some cool stuff with her where she basically just like said, hey, uh, I, I know a secret code that the developers use, so punch this in and I'll do something, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember you telling me about that. Yeah, so yeah, I'm lo looking forward to her. She was on when we did our top five characters we'd like to see in Marvel Snap. She was my number one. 
Yeah, for sure. And uh, I mean, th- this is a neat, a neat power. It seems like they're doing a lot of boost ones, so uh, she'll be fun to play with uh, Gilgamesh. Oh yeah, another one that'll work in there. Yeah, I can't wait till if I do have her in my hand, I'm able to lay her out instead on turn three and watch her give two power because it's a random card in your hand three times, so it could be the same card, I assume. Yeah, and it gets plus six. Uh, so what, what if you only have one card in your hand? Yeah. There you go. That's a guarantee. So I kind of like how that's going to roll out. Next up, Bob from Hydra. One cost, four power. After each turn, this moves if a player snapped. And I love this idea of snapping, influencing stuff that's happening to cards. Not only is it going to affect what happens if you win or lose, but it also has an impact on whether you win or lose. Yeah, no, it, you know, could... You know, you're you're snapping based on how you think the rest of it's going to go, and that will change the circumstances that could affect that will affect the outcome. But it could, especially if you're performing the dreaded boomer snap. Oh my goodness! I don't. When I was first looking at what was coming up this season, I don't think I realized what his power was. I, I haven't read a lot of stuff with Bob, but he's. I mean, just Bob from Hydra. He sounds like a character that I would find amusing. <laughs> so, and I did just get a HeroClix figure of him recently too, for the first oh, really? time. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. That, not from an effectiveness standpoint, but just from an amusement standpoint, that's probably the one that I'll be most looking forward to. And I should have the spotlight keys to get him. Ooh, all right, sweet. I got three right now, so. Okay. Again, it may not be the most effective, but yeah, that's the one. I I enjoy move decks, so. Yeah. uh, He'd be good to throw in there. The next up is Ajax, five cost, five power. That's an ongoing plus one power for each card in play, afflicted with negative power. So first off, do you know who Ajax is? For some reason, it's it's barely there for me, but I, I can't remember. He's a guy that doesn't like Deadpool. I think he was in Weapon X or had some connection to Weapon X. Probably the main place you and a lot of people know him from is he was the villain in the first Deadpool movie where he was so horrifying that you actually got mistaken and thought Deadpool was a good guy in that movie. <laughs> like he's not, but by comparison to Ajax, you're like, well, I guess he's the protagonist. You know, protagonist doesn't have to be the good guy. I, I do know that, but uh, yeah, and at least in Deadpool too, he was trying to help do something other than get revenge on people who, you know, hurt him or who wronged him. Mm. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'll wait. <laughs> okay. No more high evolutionary rants. No more Deadpool movie rants. <laughs> he's writing um, it down. Anyway, folks. That, that's who, that's who Ajax is. I like the power. Don't have good associations with the character, but you know, I haven't gotten Sebastian Shaw either. Although I I would just haven't had the opportunity now. But I would imagine Ajax will help you win more games than Bob from Hydra. I, mm. I want Bob from Hydra. <laughs> right. If you lay out Hazmat on the final turn, and your effect again, this is plus one power for each card in play. So that's both sides. That's both sides. This guy could go up big time. You have him out there on turn five and then hazmat. Yeah. He's, he's the anti Gilgamesh. He'll hate Luke Cage. <laughs> yeah, he so, will. I mean, I mean it, it won't stop him totally, but it'll reduce what he can do for you. And you'll have to weigh whether Luke Cage and hazmat are usually running mates, just like in Heroes for Hire number 207 <laughs> through 224. Didn't happen canceled after 125. You, you'll have to think, like, well, do I want Luke Cage in a deck with Ajax? Right, right. It might be worth it because I'm not sure if you lose one from a bunch of on your side, but you're getting all that plus one in one card. Hmm, now I'm overthinking it, or then do you? Well, here's the thing. It you says, put Living uh, Tribunal in there. Well, okay. Okay, so let's say you play Hazmat. Let's say you've got five cards out when you play Hazmat, okay? So then there's five cards with minus one on your side. Then you play Ajax, that's plus five just for your side. So you lose five across the board, but you gain five on one location. Yeah. And then to counter that, is it worth it or is it too complicated to throw Living Tribunal out there? So basically it's a wash for you, but your opponent gets all those subtractions and then you get their points. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm not good enough with the math. Maybe it's not even that I'm not good enough. I'm too you lazy. Gotta, well, okay, I'm thinking it through here. Turn three, magic. Okay. Turn five, Ajax. Okay. Turn seven, Tribunal. Mm-hmm. So, okay. All right. So at that point, yeah, essentially what's going to happen is you 
You lose power, but he gains it also. Just like you said, it's a wash, and you don't lose anything. It's You're a wash the, on your side. Right. But the, tribunal. Uh, the other side loses all that power to all their cards on turn six. I think it, it could be an advantage. Okay. All right. Next up, copycat, three costs, five power. When you draw this, steal the text from the bottom card of your opponent's deck. I was watching a guy who mentioned for this card and the next card we're about to talk about using Korg with copycat. Mm -hmm. They talked about when you put the rock into their deck, it shuffles their deck because it says... right shuffle it in there so yeah. apparently it shuffles everything but i don't understand how that gives you an advantage to copy whatever i mean the only thing really the advantage you get is knowing kind of like what they have in their deck well uh, i think i figured it out it's in the wording when you draw this steal the text so i think that that text leaves that card yeah absolutely okay all right so then when you you lay out copycat first then you do korg korg then shuffles that card that you stole the text from possibly the best situation is now that card with no text on it gets shuffled to the top. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. So they yep, can't, good point. yeah, they can't use yeah. that card. Excellent. It's just going to yeah. be useless. Yeah. Good, now good, I get it. Good point. And also I, that'd go into my body slide by no fun deck. <laughs> yes. AKA the, the mill deck, because without shuffling it, they're probably not going to know what they missed unless you start draining their deck. Right. That also forces them to use it. That's good stuff. I, I kind of like this now. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I like Copycat. Um, you know, uh, do you know that you probably read a lot of comics with Copycat in them? Copycat sounds familiar. Well, it's Vanessa from the... It's Marina Baccarin from the Deadpool movies, even though she doesn't shapeshift in those. Oh. But you read a comic called X-Force. I, I did. Yeah. Oh, um, she's, Domino, oh she's Vanessa... I domino. Yeah. I knew it. You know, it's funny. I looked at this card today and I'm like, is that, is that the girl that, and, and it just went through my mind real quickly. I was like, nah, that can't be it. Well, now I know. Was, yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think technically the first appearance of domino wasn't until somewhere in the teens for X-Force, like right before executioner song. Her actual appearance, like actual as actually yeah, Domino. I think she was Vanessa copycat replaced her for a while, or maybe she was in those early New Mutants issues. I'm I'm not sure, but uh, I had the impression that she didn't actually appear in X Force at any rate until sometime like in the double digits. Okay, all right. I, I think you're right. When we covered Legion Quest, we kind of brought up and started talking a little bit about Vanessa because Cable and Domino had some words. You got to remember that. You know, Domino and Cable, even though there's this tension there, a lot of it's because Vanessa and what she did. Anyway, moving on. Our next card is a card that we're all going to get for free, apparently. It's just got to be, I don't know how it's going to work, but it's going to be part of this Deadpool, Deadpool's Diner thing. Did you look at any of this? Or have you heard anything about Deadpool's Diner? Yes, I have. Now ask okay. me if I remember it. <laughs> Do you remember that? No. Oh. I remember reading about it, but I don't remember what it actually does. It sounds like it's going to be some, some kind of, of like... event where you get like special currency or tokens or something involved. Do you remember what the tokens are called? No. Bubs. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we got to get Wolverine in there somehow. Yeah. Anyway, Cassandra Nova, three cost, one power. On reveal, she steals one power from each card in your opponent's deck. You get her out there on turn three. At that point, how many cards are on the table possibly do you have in your hand and drawn? You start out with three in your hand, right? Mm -hmm. And then you draw one on the first turn. So that leaves six in. So she's a three, seven. You play her on turn three. Well, in a normal size deck, it, be a good running mate with Darkhawk. True. Because you play her against Thanos or Arishim. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine? And throw, throw the rocks in, and when it says steal one power, I don't think that you wouldn't get anything from the rocks. I think they would become minus one. They do. They all become minus one. That was one of the things that I had written down here was Corgan Rock Slide. You throw them out there, and then you lay out Cassandra Nova, and you're taking that and turning those into negative one cards, minus one power. Yeah. You drain that. Man, I can't believe I didn't think of that. Cause and so she, she'll be nice working with Ajax. 24-18? 18 so she could be a 319 there you go my gosh get armor so maybe maybe play yeah i was gonna say play her with armor armor but, but yeah and then, uh, shang chi and luke cage will be good uh this uh this season if you don't have the new cards gilgamesh will help out with her too yeah wow 
Well, any other thoughts on Cassandra Nova? I'm just kind of I, that blows me away. 319, and it's free. So everybody gets this card. I assume if they do something special at Deadpool's Diner, if they, I mean, I assume if they play a certain amount of games, everybody's yeah. getting this card, is my understanding. So. Maybe with, uh, and hey, well, okay, now I'm stretching it too thin, but, uh, you know, imagine if you get a uh, Sacred Timeline or Moon Girl, you could have her twice. Or, uh, I mean, it, it, it's still going to be hard to get, you know, 319 twice, but, you know. <laughs> That's just crazy. But, uh, I mean, I, you also throw her on freaking Wong. Oh, wow, yeah. You're Ooh, taking two power. Yeah, it is, dude. It, it essentially, I mean, it's really going to hurt that deck bad. And, yeah, like you said, Luke Cage is going to have to be a standard then. I mean, because... Cosmo. Right. It still doesn't do Cosmo anything. More, but I always just end up messing myself up. Not my fault. He's a good boy. He is a good boy. It doesn't do, do anything with the fact that you're going to have a... You know, if you lay Cassandra Nova on Wong and you pull, it's going to be tough, though, because you got to get Wong out there on turn three, Cassandra Nova out on turn four, I guess. Yeah, that's about the earliest way you can get that to happen. And then you're pulling at that point. So four, three, seven, five. She can go up. I guess it'd be ten. But but even I mean, you're hitting them with negative one power. Even if you're not getting a huge number from her, think about how Scorpion can make a difference. Right. Right. So, I mean, yeah, that could definitely make a difference, man. She could even make it harder for Baku to come and brighten your day. <laughs> yeah, he shows up and you lose because he's a negative. You stay whatever. away from Baku, Cassandra Nova. <laughs> I'm burning you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, she's a twin sister of Xavier, okay. right? Yeah, kind of. There's some other alien thing to her. I don't know. I mean, she's a nasty character and she's supposed to be. So, you know, she was the one that was responsible for the genocide of Genosha. But it was Cassandra Nova who was pulling the strings. It wasn't Krask or anybody else you saw on X-Men 97. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, I remember them talking a little bit about that, how they kind of pulled from another story. I mean, I'm not complaining about that, uh, but I'm just saying that that was her, pretty much her introduction in in X-Men was wiping out 16 million mutants in Genosha. (laughs) Oh, jeez. All right, we're heading into locations here, folks. Location, location, location. First up, Taco Truck. Add a chimichanga to your hand. And a chimichanga is a zero cost, two power on reveal. Merge this with one of your cards here. And I said, not bad, Will Legion. And I said, shocking. <laughs> it really. Well, that, that'll be a good week to, to trot out a Gilgamesh deck. Yeah, it would. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, there's not much to that location. <laughs> It's just out of Jimmy Chonga. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to merge a zero two. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's a different take on the, uh, you know, nor dimension. Yeah. So only, only it, it boosts your power and doesn't take up space. So it's the only downside with the nor dimension is I, I get uh, more energy and less places to less use space. It. Right. And then the second weapon X facility, Discard a card to draw a card. I want to know if this location means we can discard at any time in order to draw. If that's just like, hey, guys, discard a card to draw a card. Or is this a situation? I can't think of any other mechanic that lets you choose a card. So I I feel like it will just, when that location appears, a card will be discarded from your hand and you will draw a card. That's what I'm thinking, too. Because I I, I can't think of any other mechanic where you get to pick a card. The only thing I I was thinking, like, if you could discard a card at that time, like if I throw down Gambit and I discard a card, then I get to draw one. Oh, that might be like it. it, But that's very, very specific to specific type of decks. So I doubt that's the case. There's not really any locations out there that kind of favor specific archetypes of decks. So I don't think. Well, I mean, you know, death's domain. Favors of destroy. Ooh, so. you, yeah, yeah I, I think you might be right. That'll be interesting. Yeah. All right. Any other thoughts on Weapon X Facility? Mm, Weapon X Facility. I don't know if this gives you any advantage, but if it works the way you're thinking, what about a discard base discard deck with Arishem? Right, right. Because then you could Modok away your hand and draw a whole new hand. I'm not sure if that gives you any tactical advantage, but it'd be cool. Wow. It would give you a tactical advantage with, what's his face out? The Morbius. Oh, yeah. If Morbius yeah. is out there taking all, and then you don't, okay, well, I just got rid of all my cards, but I've got all replacements now. Or with the Gambit Wong combo. Right. Gambit Mystique. Yeah. Uh, Wong Mystique Gambit. Yeah. And possibly. 
possibly a little Odin involved. Yeah. I yeah, mean, but I, well, I guess we'll see how it goes down. All right. Well, there it is, folks. That is our preview of the upcoming season. Deadpool and Wolverine drops July 9th, 2024. Thanks a lot for joining us. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for the next installment of Snap Material.